All right, so welcome back. Um, remember I discussed that we would take 8EE2 into two parts, where the first part we will focus solely on perfect squares and square roots. So now the second part, we're going to use those same strategies to help us work with perfect cubes and cube roots. So cubes are really, really fun to work with. And if we were in the classroom, I have tons of cubes that we could play with. But unfortunately, we're not in the classroom. So we have to be a little bit more creative as to how we engage with these mathematical concepts. So I have for us, use my trusty whiteboard and this cool website I found. It's toytheater.com slash cube. And it's going to enable us to play around with cubes. So as you can see on the screen, I have a singular cube here and the singular cube creates a cube. So much like the square roots that we worked with last time, we have our side length. So there's one cube on each side for a total of one cube on my screen. So we are going to build off of this cube. So the next cube that we create it's going to have a side length of two. So that means I need to add a cube here and here and here and then up in there. So as you can see, I still have a cube because I have the same amount of cubes on each side. The question is, how many cubes do I have total? So I'm going to redo that so we can count while I work. So we started with one cube, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have them back to my cube. And how many total little cubes do I have in it? I have eight. All right, let's try another one. If I want to create a cube with a side length of three, that means I need to add a cube. So we had eight. Let's see if we can just continue counting. So nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. And then I can roll it around and make sure I see three by three on every single side. Oops, don't count that cute. So we count it 27. All right, so the question becomes, do I have to have a cube manipulative to figure out my cube groups? Absolutely not. So we can do this very similarly to how we work with our squares. So remember when we had like one squared, that became one times one, which equaled one. And if we had two squared, that became two times two, which equals four. So our cube roots, like I said, they will work very similarly. And I'm going to switch my color pen just a little bit. So if we have one cubed or one to the third power, that becomes one times one times one. So as you can see the difference here, instead of just having one multiplied by itself two times like we have up here, we're multiplying one by itself three times. But because it's just one, our answer is still going to be 1. If I'm working with my 2 cubed, that's going to become 2 times 2 times 2. So I'm multiplying 2 by itself 3 times. So some of you get a little anxious when you're multiplying more than two numbers together. So here's how I want us to do this. Take our first two numbers and multiply those together. So just do two times two, which equals four, and then do that part. Four times two, that equals eight, and we can check our work. Excellent. So let's do three to the third power, or three cubed. Three times three 
times 3. Multiply those first two threes together first. So 3 times 3. That's going to give us 9. And then we multiply it by that last 3. That gives us 27. Let's try a number we hadn't got to. Like 5. 5 to the third power equals 5 times 5 times 5. So again, it's the same process. We're going to take our first two numbers and multiply them together. So 5 times 5 is 25. And then we're going to multiply that by 5. And that will give us 125. So the process is exactly the same. So let's say we want to go from a perfect cube back to a cube root. So if I, when I use the symbol for cubic roots, it's a little different than square root. So you remember the square root was just like this. Just that symbol, the upside down L, the division sign. We're still going to use that, and that's called a radical. So we'll keep our radical intact. The only difference is when we're working with perfect cubes, we're putting a 3 out there. So you know that this is a cube root instead of just a regular square root. If we were looking for the fourth root of a number, we would replace that 3 with a 4. Or if we're looking for the sixth root of a number, you would replace it with a 6. So this number here is called an index, and it just changes so we know what we're looking for. So if I'm looking for the cube root of 8, I am asking, what is the number that I multiply by itself three times to get back to 8? And it has to be the same number. So is it 1 times 1 times 1, 2 times 2 times 2, 3 times 3 times 3? And we should know from our work above that is 2. Are there any other numbers I can multiply together to get 8? It has to be the same number. So if you think back to those square roots, when we had 100, we figured out that we could use positive 10 and positive 10. We can use negative 10 and negative 10 if we're multiplying. Can we do the same thing here? Could we use three negative twos? So if I have negative two times negative two times negative two. So let's do our process. Let's multiply these first two together first. So I have a negative and a negative multiplied together. That's going to give me a positive. Then I'll take my positive and multiply it by a negative. So I have a positive and a negative. I'm multiplying together, but that gives me a negative number. So 4 times negative 2 would give me negative 8. Well, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for positive 8. So in this instance, when we're working with cubes, it definitely matters. Your signs are so important. So we will have to review how we effectively multiply positive and negative integers um, so we can make sure that we get the correct sign. It will take practice, and we will, we will give it the practice it deserves. Now, if we were looking for the cube root, of a negative 8. Then we could say the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Because we know when we multiply all of these numbers together, that does give us a negative 8. And we also know if we multiply 2 times 2 times 2, we will not get negative 8. So in these instances, it matters. So if we start with a negative over here, we can most definitely have a negative over here. If we are looking like up here, 
If we're looking for the square root of a negative 100, do we know what that equals? Not currently, but you will learn that there is a way to figure out the square root of a negative number. So for now, don't worry yet, Hakuna Matata on this. You will get there. And if you're truly interested, I can have some a conversation with you about how we can figure that out. But for now, we're just going to press pause on negative square roots. So your takeaways from this section, creating perfect squares. If you do not have your cube manipulatives near you, you are just going to take your base and multiply it by itself three times. You are going to take your base and multiply it by itself three times. And then if you are tasked with finding the cube root, think to yourself, what is this question asking me? It is asking me to find the singular number that I multiply by itself three times to get back to the number in the radical. We will practice. Do not worry. This was a brief hot shot overview. I hope it was helpful. I hope it will give us a nice springboard to continue to practice this mathematical concept. Um, don't fret if it was a lot, if you feel overwhelmed, because it is my job, and I love my job to the death. It is my job to continue to break this down for you, to make it easier for you. So we will chunk it, and we will do what we need to do, because yes, we can. And don't you ever forget it.